So I'm going to go ahead and jump right in about talking about caracals. As always, if you guys have any questions about anything, please drop a comment so that we can answer it for you. So first things first, caracals are part of the Felidae family, so they are cats. And they are classified as small cats. So one of the cool differences between small cats and big cats, other than just the general size difference, but are unable to roar, which is going to be different in big cat species such as lions who are unable to purr but can roar. So these guys are going to be most closely related to servals and African golden cats. And similarly, they're going to share kind of the same habitat range. Um, caracals do inhabit an incredibly wide uh, habitat range or geographical range. They are native to most of Africa, but they are going to be most abundant in South Africa. They can also be found throughout the Middle East. India and into Asia. Now caracals are going to prefer really dry, uh, warmer temperatures and they're going to be found mostly in grassland and savanna habitats. So they prefer kind of those areas with the longer grasses and lower lying shrubs. So these guys have some really distinctive features that are really cool about caracals. So of the small cats, caracals are the largest species. Caracals can get anywhere from about 25 to 40 pounds. Ando's most recent weigh-in was somewhere around 17 kilograms, meaning he's about 35 to 37 pounds. So he's definitely on the higher end of that scale. So that's a great question. I had somebody ask about how high they jump, so I'm going to get to that in just a second. Um, again, one of the really distinctive features about caracals, and it's really cool. Um, but like I said, they are the largest of the small cat species. Ondo is about 35 to 37 pounds. Males do tend to be larger than females. They are also the fastest of the small cats. They've clocked in at about 50 miles per hour. Now going back to that question about how high can they jump. So those really powerful back legs, these guys can jump about 10 to 12 feet into the air. Um, birds tend to be a, a favorite prey item among the caracal species, so those back legs really, really come in handy. Now all caracals are going to be this really pretty reddish sandy color, and they're going to have light underbellies, and they have some really distinctive uh, features about their faces. Those black markings around his eyes are very distinctive, and their eyes tend to look a little bit more hooded. Now scientists do theorize that those hooded eyes do help with glare, especially in their wild habitat, such as Africa, where it does tend to be very, very sunny. Those hooded eyes will protect their, sun, their eyes from the sun's glare, usually helps them hunt a little bit better. But the most important feature of these guys, or the most distinctive, is definitely going to be those ears. Now caracal is actually a Turkish term, meaning black ears, so it's definitely where they get their name. Each of those ears is going to have about 20 muscles individually. And then it's going to have those distinctive long tufts of hair at the end. Now nobody knows for sure why exactly caracals have those tufted ears, but there are several theories. The first is, like I mentioned earlier, they do tend to inhabit um, grassy areas, savannas, and uh, areas with lowland shrubs. So while they're hunting, those tufts could um, tend to interrupt their silhouette, especially in the grass line. So that way, any potential prey that sees them coming is not going to quite be able to distinguish that cat-like face. But a more popular theory, or a more uh, well-versed theory among scientists, is that they use those tufts to communicate amongst each other. Now as a keeper for uh, this section, our small cat grotto sections here at the San Antonio Zoo, it's something that I've definitely noticed with my time with Ando. He does tend to use those ears to tell us how he's feeling. Now as I mentioned earlier, these guys are part of the Felidae family, so they are carnivorous. As I mentioned, those really powerful back legs do help them jump uh, really high distances and help them catch uh, prey items such as birds. They do also prey on other species such as um, rodents, such as rabbits, um, and even smaller antelope species such as dictic or dikers. Now 
Now in the wild, these guys have a lifespan about uh, 10 to 12 years, but usually in a zoological setting, it's gonna be closer to about 15 to 17. They don't have to worry about where their food comes from. They don't have any natural predators here and as well as round the clock medical care. So it does tend to extend their lifespan quite a bit. Now I did have a question about whether or not they are nocturnal. And yes, these guys do tend to hunt a little bit more exclusively at night. Those big eyes really help uh, bring in any light that they might need while they are hunting at night. Alrighty, so Andre just went around the corner. He'll be back in just a minute as he explores his habitat. One of our uh, animal care managers just put out some uh, meat items, some diet items for him. So he's going to explore a little bit and I'm sure he'll be back around in just a second. But to continue talking about caracals in the wild, uh, caracals are usually solitary. I do get a lot of questions uh, about why Ando is housed alone. So unlike some of the lions and big cat species that we're really familiar with that have those big family groups and prides, uh, caracals are only going to come together when it's time to breed. And that's usually going to happen uh, when they're about one to two years old is going to be the start of their um, sexual maturity where they come together to breed. But that's pretty much going to be the only time that you're going to see more than one caracal together. He's coming back around just a second. He's showing off some jumping skills around that corner. And if you can see him in the grassland up there, that's what he's gonna look like in a wild habitat with those long tufts of ears kind of breaking up his natural silhouette. So once these guys breed in the wild, um, mother caracals will usually find abandoned nests, usually aardvark tunnels or even porcupine tunnels to have her kittens. And she will have between one to six, although two is the average. Little kittens will stay with their mothers about 10 to 12 months before going off on their own. Now, similar to most cat species, the successful kill rate for these guys is probably going to be somewhere between 30 to 40 percent. It's often not as high as we think that it's going to be. Uh, they put a lot of energy into hunting, and as you can imagine, they're not going to try to do it too often without making sure that they are going to be successful. Which leads me to my other favorite fact. Um, Black-footed cats are going to be the highest kill rate uh, in the, and they share the same natural habitat as caracals. And they're actually going to be 60 to 70 percent and they're no larger than the common house cat. So as I mentioned earlier, they're going to have kittens that stay with them about 10 to 12 months before striking out on their own. So now Ando is not uh, currently housed with another female. So again, he is going to be housed as a solitary animal because that's going to be uh, more familiar and what a more naturalistic habitat would look like for him. As well as lots of spaces to um, bask and get some really good sun and some exercise as well. We have various enrichment items throughout his enclosure. One of my favorites is this little hanging hammock over here in the corner that we tend to put lots of meat items on so that he has the option to climb up and around so that way he can exercise and use those um, natural behaviors such as jumping and using his sense of smell to be able to find things around his enclosure. Now in the summers, there's a, uh, a good pro tip for those of you who when uh, we are able to host you guys again, which we are hoping to do soon. We're so excited to have you guys back hopefully very soon. Uh, he does have a couple hiding places during the summers that I can point out to you. So the best one that you're going to be able to find is actually going to be back this direction. And again, it's going to be one of those where he likes to show off his agility. It's going to be at the very top of the enclosure. And it's a nice, cool, shady little area where he likes to go in the summers. So as you guys visit again and come through the cat grottos, I can more than guarantee that he's most likely going to be in that spot. Uh, so we got a question about training and I am Ando's primary trainer right now so I'm working on a couple behaviors with him. Uh, mostly we work on a target behavior. Now what that means is we present usually a target pole or stick that has a very bright colorful end to it so that he can distinguish it and we present that to the animal in a holding area so it's an area that's off exhibit and that usually has their AC or their heat, especially as they need it, especially in the summers. We got some good AC going through there. Um, so targeting means that we ask the we present a target, we ask the animal to usually press their nose or even tongue 
to the uh, target stick, and that way we are able to move them around their enclosures. That really helps us out as keepers. If it ever comes down to having a veterinarian come down, maybe check out their general health, look at eyes, ears, noses, all of that good stuff, that that way we are able to move them around and present our veterinarians with a better kind of vision of how our animals are doing. If they're like ocelots, well, so they are in the same small cat family as ocelots, but they're not going to be closely related. Like I mentioned earlier, the uh, closest relation for caracals is going to be servals and African golden cats. And ocelots occupy a little bit of a different geographical range. Ocelots are actually going to be able, uh, you are going to be able to find ocelots here even in South Texas. Though they do both prefer that kind of dry, uh, warmer temperature for sure. They're not going to be too closely related. All right, guys, so we're going to head back to the other side as Ando does move around his enclosure pretty frequently. We're going to be able to switch back between windows so that way we can provide you guys with a better perspective of what he's doing as he moves around. So as I mentioned earlier, pro tip for those of you as you come to the zoo, this top spot up here where it's nice and shady is going to be a spot, as I say it, <laughs> he goes to most often. So as you guys come back, which again, we're hoping to see you guys real soon, that tends to be one of his favorite spots. And for those of you that have donated during this video, thank you so much. We really, really appreciate those of you who are able to donate and the donations that you give us. Again, we are a nonprofit and we do rely on those donations so that we are able to continue to provide top class care for our animal species. So we really appreciate it. So I had another great question. So what are their main predators? Uh, like I mentioned earlier, these guys are carnivorous species that are native to Africa. So as you can imagine, there are some top predators that they share a geographical region with that do um, pose a threat to them. So usually things like hyenas and lions are going to be their main threat, um, but unfortunately humans as well. Caracals are often considered a pest species. They do unfortunately uh, go after agriculture, things like sheep and goats. Uh, and unfortunately, they are considered um, functionally extinct in, extinct in some of the areas where they were once uh, pretty abundantly found. However, according to the IUCN Red List, these guys are still considered least concerned, and that's really uh, mostly due to the really wide geographical range. As I mentioned earlier, they're found throughout most of Africa, though mostly in southern Africa, as well as through the Middle East and uh, India and even Asia. Alrighty guys, well thank you guys so much again for tuning in. We are going to be doing Facebook Lives at 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. for the rest of this week. For those of you who are able to donate, we really appreciate. And for those of you thinking about it, we would appreciate any donations that you guys would be able to give. Once again, thank you guys for tuning in. We hope to see you soon.